Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. I think the uh, title of this video will be Arguing is Good. Maybe, maybe the title uh, is shocking to you. How could I possibly argue that arguing is good? <laughs> there are a lot of people who get very disturbed when pe people are arguing. They definitely don't want to argue. And they just get very, uh, very uncomfortable. And a uh, certain kind of arguing is bad and certain kind of arguing is good. But I I'm going to um, argue for the case that um, if we argue correctly, arguing can be very beneficial. If we argue incorrectly, arguing can be very destructive. First, uh, let me start with a saying that I heard years ago. Uh, if two men always agree, then one of them is unnecessary. Think about that. If two men always agree, one of them is unnecessary. Um, you don't need the other person for advice or for information uh, or for correction if they just always agree with you. Uh, it's, it's when people don't always agree that they can actually point out uh, possible mistakes and, and have a discussion or an argument and try to work it out and see who actually is right and wrong. Uh, personally, uh, I would find it very uninteresting, unproductive, and boring uh, to uh, spend my time with someone who agreed with me on every single thing that came out of my mouth. Uh, what's the point? I might as well just talk to myself. <laughs> so so uh, I do want uh, to be s surrounded by people who uh, uh, do not agree with me completely. In fact, the, the truth is I've never met one person who agrees with me completely on anything, and especially uh, on theology. And uh, conversely, I could say that uh, uh, I've never met any person with whom I agreed completely, 100% on everything. I think that's uh, universally true, though. Uh, if uh, I made a, a video, I think it was titled uh, Test for Dogmatism or Dogmatist Test, and I gave like 10 or 15 uh, theological questions. I said, just if you, if you want to find out uh, who really agrees with you, just ask everybody what they think about all these different theological topics. And I, I am certain that if you uh, open up enough cans of worms, uh, you offer up enough theological subjects for discussion, uh, even your best friend your closest ally, you're going to find that in some ways you disagree, either in some ways uh, quite substantially, in other, in other ways you may disagree. Uh, basically, it's just the nuances, but there's not complete agreement. So we're never going to agree completely with each other. So I hope we can learn to accept that as a, as a truth, as a fact of life. Um, and we should welcome people who disagree so that we can have a conversation, an argument. Uh, but uh, uh, there uh, is a healthy way of arguing and there's a very healthy and uh, unhealthy or destructive way of arguing. And that's what I want to discuss today. Uh, first, let me tell you that uh, I have had uh, some great successes in my life uh, because of arguing with people. Uh, and, for example, uh, there's a brother some of you have uh, uh, seen uh, accompany on some of my earlier videos, uh, Brother Frank. He and I did a lot of street preaching together. And uh, we don't agree on everything, but uh, well, there was one thing that when I first met him that was I thought was a serious error. Uh, he was one of the leaders of the Las Vegas chapter of Way of the Master. 
he was teaching people and um, I'm, I'm working to gain proselytes into the way of the master system of evangelism. And I personally, I, you know, I had studied that system very well. I got all of Ray Comfort's books and DVDs and audios and uh, I, I saw the serious problem with it was that it's uh, not faith alone, it's faith and works. Uh, repent of your sins. And so I, I uh, had many talks or arguments with Frank about that and I'm happy to say that Frank was persuaded and he left that organization. So the argument that I had with Frank over Way of the Master uh, uh, was successful in that uh, Frank was persuaded and he saw the error uh, in their, uh, their system and left. Uh, also, uh, there's another person that uh, in the past that uh, I argued with. Uh, he did not believe in KJV only. And uh, I was a staunch KJV onlyist. I've read probably 40 of Dr. Peter Ruckman's books. And uh, I knew all of the problems with the modern translations uh, and. and uh, I argue staunchly for KJV onlyism, and but because uh, of my arguing with Jim about this, uh, Jim was able to show me some things that changed my mind. So in in that particular argument, I was persuaded, and I moved from KJV only to basically KJV preferred, and I like to look at all the different translations now. So in that argument, uh, someone was persuaded, and I was the one that was persuaded. There's, um, I've had arguments over the years with uh, modalists. Uh, I hold to the Trinitarian uh, viewpoint of the Godhead, uh, and uh, I've met modalists on uh, YouTube and uh, argued against modalism and for Trinitarianism. And, uh, I've yet to persuade a modalist to become a Trinitarian, and they have yet to persuade me to join them in modalism. So in that case, uh, what was gained from the arguing was uh, knowledge. I learned a lot about modalism, uh, but I wasn't persuaded that it was correct. Um, uh, there's a friend of mine here in Las Vegas that uh, 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 came up with some crazy idea about hell that was foreign to the rest of us in, in my home Bible study. And uh, he, was, he was arguing that uh, eternal torment in hell is false, that uh, people uh, are, uh, will just get annihilated. They get judged and then annihilated. They, they'll be judged for their sins, they'll pay for their sins, uh, and, and then they are annihilated and perish. And that was a foreign idea. Uh, nobody else in the Bible study uh, um, agreed. Uh, some of the people were uh, seriously even offended uh, by such a, uh, a doctrine being brought into our small group fellowship. And um, uh, Tony persisted. I, I never asked Tony to leave the Bible study because he had such a, a different viewpoint on hell. And it turns out after uh, a couple of years of arguing with Tony, uh, I argued in favor of eternal torment. Uh, and I find myself now believing that Tony is correct and that uh, I uh, now do not hold to the doctrine of eternal torment in hell. So in this case, um, because I was willing to argue respectfully, uh, uh, politely, with good manners, uh, arguing as a, an attorney would argue in a courtroom, listening to one side and, and taking notes and giving thoughtful consideration, uh, giving a fair hearing to the other side, and then uh, either being persuaded or trying to persuade the other side to join my side. Uh, that is the correct uh, form of, of arguing that I'm, I'm endorsing, I'm recommending. Uh, because I, in all the arguments I've had over the years, I've found that sometimes I've persuaded the other person. Sometimes they persuaded me. 
Sometimes no one's persuaded, but at least we are both learning from each other. One of the most recent conversions I've had is uh, from arguing with uh, Brother Mitch about uh, the book of James. Uh, I, I argued all the traditional arguments supporting and explaining the book of James, all the arguments that, uh, uh, it, it, uh, that you probably hold to. If you're watching this video now, most people think that James, uh, the book of James uh, uh, can be explained and, and it does not uh, conflict or contradict in any way teachings of Paul or John or Jesus and, and, and it, that it's, it's, it can be explained. And uh, I was on that side for years. I've argued with Mitch and uh, I'm good at the arguments. I understand how to try to explain away all the verses. But I was also good at listening. And I gave uh, Brother Mitch a fair hearing. I honestly listened and considered to what he had to say. And I took notes and then I studied it for myself and uh, one day I realized that I was persuaded. And uh, now I see the book of James uh, differently than I did before. And so I, I'm really thankful for all of these good arguments that I've had on theology over the years uh, because uh, in every case I've learned. In some cases I've persuaded the other person to join my side. In other cases they've persuaded me to join their side. But the only reason these uh, arguments were able to uh, go on and be successful is because both sides were mature, reasonable, polite, respectful, and, and fair-minded, willing to listen to the other side and honestly consider instead of just having a, a, uh, an emotional knee-jerk reaction to a different point of view and, and covering your ears and eyes and not even wanting to consider a different point of view. If that's the kind of attitude that you have, then I feel sorry for you because uh, learning has ended for you. You will never learn another thing because you've already closed your mind. Some people, uh, now I hope you're understanding now, when I say arguing is good, I'm not talking about emotional type of arguing where a person is uh, you know, verbally fighting with each other and getting angry. and uh, that's, that's not the kind of arguing I'm endorsing. Uh, I'm talking about arguing as, as attorneys argue in a courtroom, arguing for their, their side of the case. Uh, so, but there are people um, who, who've told me that they just don't like the arguing. And, and they, they, uh, they, they quote uh, Rodney King, that famous saying, he said, can't we all just get along? <laughs> uh, they just do not like any strife. Well, I'll tell you what. Personally, I don't like strife either. Uh, and if, if strife is emotional and ang anger and, and uh, um, you know, it causes divisions in that way, then uh, I agree. I don't like that either. But, but that kind of strife and, 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 and those kinds of divisions uh, come about from bad arguing. Uh, not the kind of arguing, arguing that I'm recommending, where we actually listen to each other and, and consider the other side and uh, respectfully uh, either uh, uh, persuade the other or agree to disagree without resorting to, you know, calling people names and getting angry. Um, now, uh, there's... A, all kinds of theological subjects, topics, questions to discuss. Probably maybe a hundred different things in, in different topics that, or more. Uh, I find all of theology interesting and I like to talk about it all. Uh, but the problem is if you dare to express your opinion on uh, various theological subjects, as soon as you express an opinion, you're you're basically just sticking your chin out, waiting for someone to come and take a, a punch at you, because uh, you dare to express an opinion, and if it and if it disagrees with their uh, their opinion, uh, the, most people are not mature enough to actually have this kind of argument or conversation, and they just have this emotional knee-jerk reaction, 
and they immediately want to resort to name-calling and strife and divisions. So that's very, very unfortunate because that, uh, that uh, it, uh, inhibits learning and, and it inhibits uh, discussing discussions. Uh, there's a verse I want to refer to. It's First Peter 3, 15 and 16. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Um, Anybody who's studied scriptures very much is, is certainly familiar with that verse. Be ready with an answer. Uh, so we are supposed to study and uh, uh, be ready to defend our faith, defend the scriptures, defend our, or whatever our doctrinal positions we hold. We should be knowledgeable enough to be able to defend them. Uh, but we should do that with meekness and fear. And I think that is basically just, let's be humble. Let's not be egomaniacs. Let's be fearful or rather respectful. Let's show respect to other people when we get into these discussions. Uh, and let's not get all puffed up with pride and arrogance. And uh, Instead, let's have meekness and fear in these conversations. Uh, now that's verse 15. Verse 16 I find very interesting. It says, Having a, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Uh, this is something that I personally have uh, witnessed and experienced in a, a great deal over the years uh, here on YouTube. Uh, once I decided that I would actually openly express my opinion on any theological question, uh, kind of coming out of the closet, so to speak, about my uh, viewpoint on every theological topic, and, and expose myself to either support or criticism, I found that uh, uh, this verse 16 has really, uh, I've experienced that. Uh, that uh, wh whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they, people will not just allow for a different of opinion on various theological questions. Instead, they want to paint the other side as evil. Personally, people have called me a child of the devil. Uh, uh, unsaved, uh, uh, I'm sure many other, other uh, you know, slanderous, uh, uh, derogatory terms, pejorative terms. Uh, and and when, when this happens, it, it, it doesn't speak really about me, it speaks about the person who's doing the name calling. We should learn a lot about these people because they are making someone out to be evil because they hold a different viewpoint than they do in theology. And then at the end of the verse it says, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So I'm speaking for myself and anybody else that, uh, uh, you know, you've expressed a viewpoint on... Uh, some theological topic, uh, and then you get attacked by some people, condemned, called names, and uh, uh, and all you've uh, all we have tried to do is uh, teach what we think is correct. Now, uh, I may not always be correct. I'm confident that I'm not always correct because over the years I've given you examples where uh, I have actually been persuaded that I was wrong and I changed my viewpoint on a few things. So uh, I'm not above uh, thinking that uh, you know I could possibly be wrong about things and I'm willing to listen 
And I, once I realize I'm wrong, I'll, I'll take the other side. Uh, but it is, uh, as this verse says, they falsely accuse my good conversation in Christ. The good intentions I have of trying to uh, answer theological questions. Now, whenever you answer a question, you may have half the people love the answer and half the people hate the answer. But if we dare to give an answer, then, then we're leaving ourselves open for criticism or support. But the way that the people criticize is the problem. It, it's immature. It's not Christ-like. It's mean-spirited. And it's not productive. That is what causes strife and division. Instead of being able to have basically good manners, be polite, uh, patiently explain why you disagree without resorting to condemning someone as a child of the devil. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's only a few theological topics that, uh, that I am dogmatic about. By dogmatic, I mean that uh, I insist, I insist that you agree with me. Uh, if you don't agree with me on, on these things, then uh, I can't have fellowship with you. Uh, and I, I call this my, my core beliefs, or my, my, my three-legged stool that I rest on. And if someone is going to be a part of a fellowship with me, if I'm going to have fellowship with you, then, uh, then we have to at least agree on these most basic things. And I, I've narrowed it down to these three things. And one is that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Uh, he's not simply an angel. He's not simply a prophet. He's not just a good moral teacher. He is God Almighty who became a man. Uh, the second doctrine is that salvation is a free gift we receive from Jesus uh, by because of the grace of God alone, because God is gracious, and, and because of faith alone in Christ alone. There are no requirements to receive the gift of salvation apart from faith in Jesus Christ to receive it. So, we have the deity of Christ, we have salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, and finally, I insist on someone agreeing with eternal security. That once we've received this gift of eternal life, we've been born again as a child of God, that we can never be unborn again and go back to a lost person. That once we're saved, we're always saved, we have eternal security. We could not lose our salvation for any reason. So these are the three doctrines that uh, I insist upon, that I admit, yes, I'm a dogmatist on these three things. Now, there's a hundred other topics that uh, are interesting to discuss and beneficial to discuss, important to discuss. Uh, but I'm not going to insist that everybody agree with me on all those other topics. These I call the, the minor doctrines. And, and if someone's going to have fellowship with me, they've got to basically agree to two things. One, they agree with these three basic core beliefs, and they must also agree that on all other topics that we will tolerate other opinions, that we're not going to be dogmatic on all the other things. If someone comes up with some other opinion on any other theological topic that we can patiently, gently listen to each other, uh, share our thoughts, uh, even argue, argue it out uh, without getting angry, without being disrespectful, uh, and remain in fellowship even though we disagree on a hundred other theological topics. So, uh, if you agree that, uh, that in the deity of Christ, salvation by faith alone in Christ alone and eternal security, if you th and if you uh, can be tolerant of other people's opinions on other, all other theological topics, then I'd be happy to have fellowship with you. But if you are intolerant of other opinions on all the other theological sub subjects, some of them I've mentioned, for example, you know, uh, which version of the Bible is correct, uh, e e eternal torment in, in hell, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, 
there, there's hundreds of interesting theological subjects that are beneficial and fascinating to talk about, but we should not be dogmatic. Uh, so if you're dogmatic on those other things, then I couldn't have fellowship with you because I can't pr pr uh, participate in you know, with someone who is uh, going to be uh, so divisive over the minor things. I call it majoring in the minors. Uh, you've got the major theological questions and you've got the minor questions. Don't make the minor questions into majors. Don't make uh, a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, I made a video, um, Most Christians Make Me Sick. If you haven't seen it, it's a short video. But it's because that uh, the most Christians that I've encountered over my lifetime, I find that they really do meet this stereotype that they they are narrow-minded. They're not willing to listen to other opinions. Uh, they're intolerant. They, they 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 want to divide and fight over over all these different uh, theological topics. Uh, they're judgmental. They're always wanting to judge whether someone else is is uh, you know uh, wrong or or whether there is uh, whether they're uh, uh, even saved. Uh, and, and they're divisive. And, and they're bigoted. So, if someone does not have these uh, these negative attributes, uh, narrow-minded, intolerant, judgmental, divisive, and bigoted, then then that's a good starting point to actually have a conversation, to have an argument about all these uh, these other theological topics. Uh, the qualities that I see greatly lacking in uh, Christianity today, many people I've uh, interacted with on YouTube, uh, I don't even see these qualities. In Galatians 5.22 Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. These are the kind of qualities that uh, a Christian is supposed to have. This is called the fruit of the Spirit. And if you truly have these qualities, then you can, you can actually have a conversation with someone on a theological topic and you're not going to resort to immediately calling them a child of the devil and uh, getting angry, losing your temper. No, because you have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Unfortunately, I'm not seeing that in Christianity. I'm seeing narrow-minded, intolerant, judgmental, divisive, bigoted, hatefulness, mean-spirited. It really boils down to uh, uh, just uh, the things you learn in, in kindergarten. The most important things in life you learn in kindergarten, someone said. And that's just basically, just have good manners, courtesy, and respect. Is that so hard? Is that so hard for you? Uh, you, that you cannot be respectful to listen to someone and, and even though you don't agree on a theological question can't you be respectful and listen to each other instead of resorting to name calling some people say well we shouldn't even bring up subjects that are so controversial well if that's the way you want to live your life then, then feel free to do it uh, as for me, I value more than anything else my freedom, my freedom of speech, my freedom of religion, my freedom of thought. And I'm not going to let anybody put a muzzle over me and uh, say, just be quiet because you're causing, you're causing division, you're causing strife. No, I'm not the one that's causing division. The, the cause for the division are the people who cannot have a conversation with any maturity. They're the ones that are causing the division and the strife. Because everybody should be willing to uh, be free to express their opinions without being uh, called a child of the devil uh, and without being accused of you know, uh, being a heretic. Just because you disagree with them on one of these 
minor doctrines. So, my question really is, uh, okay, um, I wonder who, who really is responsible for this strife and the division. You've got to put the blame on the right people. It, I can't be blamed just because I'm expressing an opinion. I'm not causing the strife. The people, the, the way they're reacting to it is the cause of the strife, their immaturity. Uh, I've, uh, any, any theological uh, uh, topic I've discussed, any, any doctrine I've espoused, uh, apart from those three foundational ones, I've always told people, uh, you don't have to agree with me. You don't, you don't have to agree with me to be, uh, to remain my friend, to be, to stay in my fellowship. Um, you're free to disagree. I give you the freedom to disagree with me. If you don't like my uh, viewpoint on the book of James, you're free to disagree. I wouldn't shun you or defame you if you disagree. If you watch my videos on all these topics, you'll find out that I'm, I'm showing grace and tolerance uh, to everybody and freedom. That look, I'm not requiring that you agree with me. Cannot you, can you not show the same kind of freedom back to me? Can't you show the same tolerance back to me? And say, okay, we disagree, but I'm not questioning your salvation. I'm not calling you a child of the devil. I'm not calling you a heretic. Uh, no, we just disagree. And and can't we just, with maturity, discuss it? Maybe you'll be persuaded, as I've been persuaded in the past. Maybe you'll persuade me, if you can have an, uh, a responsible, mature conversation. So... Uh, I'm just simply want to make this video so that uh, th there are some people that are so disturbed by strife and division, and, and uh, uh, you've got to really uh, think about what really is the cause of it. Is it the person who's simply stating an opinion and, and uh, t teaching something from the, that they believe about the uh, theology? Uh, is that what's causing it? Or is it the person, the people that uh, are uh, too immature to deal with it and they have to want to fight and get ugly and mean-spirited over it and resort to name-calling? I'll tell you, from my, my experiences, I've observed uh, you know, uh, the, the arena in theology and, and the arena of politics is that uh, the, the people who resort to name-calling, uh, it normally... Uh, they resort to that because they don't have any good arguments to present. So they, they, the only thing they can do is just get emotional and, and start calling names because their side of the argument doesn't have any, any strength. All right, so uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, some people will learn that arguing is a very good thing. This is how we learn from each other, uh, and uh, we should not ever be told we shouldn't argue. It's the way that we argue that is a problem, and I'm not the guilty party in that respect. I'm not the one resorting to getting angry and, and calling people names. It's the other people that are doing that. So I, I hope you'll put the blame where it really belongs. <clears throat> Bless you all. In the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.